What's going on, guys and gals? Stock Jock here, up one thousand four hundred eighty-nine dollars in the first hour of trading. I actually finished the day up more than a uh, just shy of two thousand dollars. So I added about five hundred dollars more, uh, right around three o'clock, trading the uh, trading power hour. So let's get right into the trades. First and foremost, though, I want to in invite you all into my free Discord chat room. A lot of great traders in here that want to help out new traders, a lot of experienced traders just trading and calling out what they see. Just a really good environment to learn trading as well as to bat around trading ideas with other traders. So come on in, link for that is in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube. So my first trade was SSY. This is a stock that just showed up on my high day low float scanner here. And I get a lot of questions about what is your high of day low float scanner. And to answer that, it's just simply, you know, a, a scanner that scans stocks under $10 and they're hitting high a day and they have like 50,000 shares of volume or something like that. You know, you can set the volume to whatever you want. Um, I don't set it to like a thousand shares because then everything's hitting your scanner. So it's just a really simple scanner. It doesn't, you know, just kind of helps me find the little gems amongst the, the trees or the weeds or whatever analogy you want to use. But anyway, this one starts blowing up the scanners and I click to it and it brings me up and this is kind of what I'm looking at like right here when it hits my scanners. Um, it pops up here, sees a little volume, I immediately look at the daily chart and I see okay I'm, I have it on three months right now and I can see that you know if it breaks 175 you know there's nothing anytime soon. If I go back further you can see that if it breaks 175 last time I did it, it went to 208 right? So that's kind of what I've had I had in mind. Uh, what you're trading, who I'm a member of, link for that is in the description of this video as well. They're also watching this level. You'll hear Ross call out if 175 breaks. He's a buyer. So I'm, I've got my hand on the trigger, um, <clears throat> ready to go, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm just watching the time and sales. And once it looks like a, I see a flash of green come in, I buy, and I buy actually 4,000 shares. I hit my buy button twice. And I, there's one thing I, I didn't like what happened. When I hit my buy button twice, it was right around 170. So I was trying to get filled between basically 170 and 175 for this breakout up to two. Um, when I hit my buy button twice, it, it didn't put, it's only 7 million shares outstanding. It didn't blow through the, the price that was on the ask. The, the ask was showing maybe 500 or 1,000 shares or 100 shares. I don't even know. I can't remember. But uh, it didn't push that, and it should have. So I didn't like that. But nonetheless, I got in. The volume pushed this thing up. Uh, we cracked over two, and when it cracked two, I sold half at 187, just a market order, just to lock in some profit. And it cracked two, and you know you'll watch this if you watch the video when I show the live, the live trade. I know I was up over 1,200 bucks, and. It cracked too, and it immediately rejected that level by like 30 cents. And like, it came back down hard. Uh, and when I saw that, you know, it came all the way down to here. When I saw that, that's telling me, you know, if it's going to reject $2 that hard, it only cracked it by uh, the high of day was 202. So inside this push, it was the high of day right there. And it came back down that hard. That's not a stock I want to play around with. So I was just looking for. A little bit of a bounce. I should have. I should. I got that. I, there's two bounces that happened in the side of this candle. You know, just by looking at the chart, you wouldn't see that. So you have to see the live video to see that. So on the second bounce, it got up into the 180s, and I should have sold there because this rejection was so bad. But I didn't, and I waited longer, and I ended up selling the second half for basically two cents for 40 bucks. So it could have been a much bigger win. Um, I played the first half right. I played the second half wrong. I should have sold. Uh, in the 180s on the second half when I had the chance because I, I knew we were not going to get a second push to $2 after this disgusting rejection. As you can see, it, it just played out that way. I mean, it, this is where it opened. And, you know, two minutes later, after this pop, we're down at low a day. So big rejection there. I don't think it did anything else the rest of the day. Nope. So, um, Happy about my first trade, or my, the first half, not so happy about the second half. Yeah, 
Excess supply. If you can get over 175. That says why I'd probably be a buyer over 75 or 80. PETS, Papa Echo Tango, Sandy Pets, Med Express. Uh, shares. I'm watching SSY. 3697, Aaron. Craig Hallam downgrading to a sell. That's Papa Echo Tango, Sandy. Long SSY. SSY, I'm long at 71. SSY over $2, I would add. Out half at 187. Projecting too SSY, hard. SSY, Sunlink System, getting a spike SSY, here to the high 202. 202. That's Sandy, Sandy Yankee. If it so watch here, break it clean this time. Twenty percent. Well, render. really over two dollars. Uh, the dollar seventy. All out. Five. Uh, plus two on the rest. I don't like that rejection of two right there. Came all the way back down. So this next trade was another high day low float scanner play that I took. It was on XTLB. This one. Uh, it, it showed up on my scanner. I immediately clicked on it. I immediately looked at the daily chart. That's the first thing whenever I switch to these stocks. That's the first thing I look at. What I'm lo what am I looking for? I'm looking for what the overall trend is. You know, is it sideways? Is it going up? Is it coming down? You know, <clears throat> that's the first thing I look for. You know, if a stock is heading down like this, uh, let me see if I can find one. Uh, that's not a stock. Eh. I don't know. That's that's a bad example, but um, here's one. Overall trends down, right? It, it, this is a different play. This is a news play that popped the stock, whatever. But you know, take away this day and you know, say uh, this stock hit my scanners. You know, and it was down here. Uh, the first thing I want to see is the overall trend is it's trending down. It's not a steep downtrend, but it's still down, and there's a lot of resistance levels up here, and I just wouldn't be interested in it. But on a stock like XTLB, what I saw is just sideways, sideways movement. You got support around the 188 and 170 level, and you got resistance at this 200-day moving average, and it's just been bouncing around there. And it has showed recently that it can run. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, all this time, it's just consolidating through here. It's on low volume. I think the most volume was 150,000 shares in these two days here. So uh, when it gets volume, it can move. Here's the, this day. I don't know when this was, May 7th, when it ran like crazy when it had 2 million shares of volume. Um, I didn't look at this number right here at the at the time when I was trading, oh, you can't see it. Sorry, it's showing um, 338,000 shares outstanding. Super low float, super super low float. So, um, you couple, you know this. So, what what am I looking at? It hits my scanners, boom. I see. Okay, <laughs> it's been just bouncing around this level here for three months. If you can break to this upside with some volume, it can move, you know? It could be a 100% mover. Easy, easy. So it's my scanners. I look at it, and the spreads suck. I mean, they suck. Uh, 944 is what I got in. So right in here. So, okay. I'm looking at it. The spreads are terrible. I see that there's a little bit on the ask up to about 219. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. Okay, we're, we're over the 200-day moving average. We're kind of breaking these peaks over here on the daily chart. If I see volume come in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. I, I see volume coming in, and I go for it. Take 4,000 shares, right? 217. As soon as I get in, it starts going the other way. We go candle under candle. I should have stopped out. I really should have. And this does exactly what uh, SSI, SSY sorry, did, right? SSY popped up and then went candle under candle and then just completely crapped on itself right went low a day this i was fearful that i was going to do the exact same thing so my absolute stop was going to be 188 the break of 188 so i went long 
it popped up uh, and then it immediately came right back down hard through that level and I'm like okay I and mean, you'll hear me I'm telling my, my chat room uh, I gotta stop out I'm just gonna wait for just a mini bounce just a relief bounce maybe sell around two dollars it'd be a, a you know seven eight hundred dollar loss and I would have been okay with that the risk reward was there but what happened is is the, the spreads were so terrible that uh, when people were buying, it was popping it right back up towards high day. So I'm like, okay, this thing actually somehow climbed, you know, back towards high day in two minutes on, let's see, 620 shares of volume and 2,000 shares of volume, and it took 20,000 shares to put it down. So that's, this is luck. This is not skill. These two candles are luck. It gets there. It gets back up there. And when it gets back up close to high day, you're going to bring in other people looking at it, and this is where... Uh, the other chat rooms start looking at it, and they go long right through here as it's breaking high a day in this level right here, which does me well because I was trapped at 217. So this was this was luck right here, right? I'm not going to become a bag holder and you know hold this if it broke down out of this opening range breakdown, this level right here. This would have been my absolute stop. I would have lost over a thousand dollars pretty easily since I had four thousand shares, but. Um, I got lucky. It broke the view up again. I got some momentum, got some volume, popped it up. Now it broke 250, and I sold uh, a thousand shares in, in inside this first sell here. I just wanted to put some money in my pocket since I was so badly read on this. So it breaks 250, and it really—I mean, this thing, super super low float. This thing should have just ripped. And I mean rip. I mean it should have gone to three, three fifty easily on. It should have gone to three dollars on seventy thousand shares of volume. It really should have if it if it truly is that low float of a stock. So, but it didn't, right? So it breaks two fifty, comes right back down. You'll see the price action. It's really not pretty at all. It breaks two fifty again for the second time and can't. It goes high a day, but it comes right back down hard. It's just a hard rejection. So. I sell another uh, thousand shares inside this spike. I just don't like the price action. And then I see the bids, or I'm sorry, the sellers start to line up on the ask. And that's my cue to get out. When the bidders are pushing this higher and it's still coming down, and there really wasn't anything on the ask, that's a bad sign. But then when you start having the sellers line up and push it down, that's a really bad sign. So I sold the rest. I sold all of it basically around 237 average for a nice win, which turned out to be a nice win over a terrible loss. But uh, you'll see the price action. You kind of see that it did push it down further and, you know, right back to the support line as well. So this one might be one I'll watch in the future, especially if volume comes into it because it can move. But it's a tricky one. The spreads were really tough on this. So. It cracked four again and reclaimed it. XTLB and scanners. Ooh, I like this one. If I hear some chat rooms take an eye on it, I might jump in this thing. EBOX, black box, shares pulling back here. 226, uh, 12% now up the high of 294 in the EBOX. ISR, ice array. Two buyers. Hearing FDA 510 pre approval for Gamma Tile. That's India Sandy Romeo, low price stock shares popping on that news. I'm not even going to say anything about that. Chatter circulating FDA on FDA approval. Very bullish. Big buyers just showed up on XTLV, like 70, 90, 100,000 shares of 
fires me a two. Uh, UK ETF the EWU uh, a little while ago. Again, starting to go with, now. Uh, Over 290, 220, I think it can rip. There we go, boys. Watch over 45. We've added at 40 for a scalp on XPLB. Sold a little bit at 238. And BVX is halted on a circuit breaker. Michael Bravo Victor X ray. Share is halted at 231. Hit a high of 255 earlier. My next ad would be over 60. That's uh, weird there on MVVX. All out, 236. Whew, I got lucky there. And then those flashes to the downside. It cracked 250 Maybe twice first. and rejected it, so that's why I had to get out. Super low flow. I didn't realize there's only a 338,000 shares. Outstanding. At least that's what E-Trade's showing. So this next trade was more of a technical play <clears throat> that I was looking for on this one is uh, TGC. This one, one of the chat rooms I, I subscribed to mentioned TGC. I pull it up and I kind of look at, liked what I was looking at for an entry spot. Now, I don't know why it popped all the way up here, whatever. It did pull back and the pullback is way too much. But a lot of the times, this is the daily chart by the way, a lot of times, when you go candle over candle on the daily chart, it's also a good entry for a day trade. And you can kind of see that with all this volume coming in here uh, around the time frame that it is about to go candle over candle on the daily chart. So basically, pop, pull back, and then candle over candle is what people are looking for. So the break of 115 is what was doing it. So here's that move right here. And as we're talking about it, I kind of liked what we were looking at. Uh, I went long at 109 with anticipation of this 115 breaking. You, you'll see it when I run the, the live video, the volume coming in, and just looked like it was ready to push. So uh, we got the break of 115, we break 120, and as soon as we break 120, again, we saw the exact same thing as we saw in the other stocks earlier a huge rejection of these important levels, and it just collapses on itself. And when I see that, um, you know, I'm like, I'm looking at places, where's the support, where's the support, where's it going to take off, you know, this is a, this is a small stock as, uh, as well, um, I don't know the float off hand, I could look that up real quick, let me see here, okay, 10 million shares outstanding, so still small float, it could move, um, but it just couldn't get going, couldn't get going, in fact, it rejected the level, came back down, and there's a big bidder, or big bidder here, uh, on the L2, you'll see it uh, at 120, and it got taken out real fast. And when, when when that got taken out, it dropped all the way to one like 14 really quick. So when I saw that, just rejecting it pretty hard, I got out for a small uh, six cent win, 120 dollars. It was hot last week, but I don't know. I kind of have to think, okay, where would this get halted? Because it broke 115, then you've got 120, so it'd probably be a 
a buyer over 115 for the first daily candle to make a new high. But it's still, you know, it's pretty cheap. So a little hard to trust. I'll just leave an order at 117. Take a starter at 112 there, and I've, add, I've just added over 115 on TGC. Now, my next add on this would be SPAF trying to get above and 125 to see if it does go into a circuit breaker halt. So, over 120 is where I would add. Getting injected there. Now we've got the first candle on the daily making a new high. So, watching TGC to break 120. And then the target's 125. You know, it's a cheap stock, but it's got a little bit of range here. It's up 20% right now. ROG, Romeo Oscar Golf, Rogers acquires Griswold. Added for the break of 120. Still expected to be accreted for 2019 earnings per share. That's Romeo Oscar Golf. My average is 113 now, so. So I forgot to mention in that last clip that for some reason my micro my computer stopped recognizing my microphone and I didn't realize it. So that's why you don't hear me calling out my my trades at this point in the morning. You'll just hear uh, the other things I'm listening to, like Ross with Warrior Trading or you know, whoever from Jason Bond or Benzinga guy coming on. So for, I think for the rest of the video you won't during the live section you won't hear my microphone. Don't know why it just stop recognizing it so anyway uh, the next trade here was PTIE and this one is not my favorite play but I'll play it occasionally so this had a gap down right from this level well actually from this level to here and it just creates this big window this void and a lot of times when a stock has settled after it gaps down it's settled in an area and if it can crack above you put a kind of a uh, let's draw a horizontal line. If you put a line right here where these previous highs were, which was here, and uh, it was it was here. So this was 283. Let's put a line right there. So that's re resistance levels, and let's make it orange. Uh, yeah, let's no, let's make it a color that isn't on the screen. Pink. That looks good. All right, there it is. So that's the that's the resistance level. A lot of times when these stocks dip down and they start coming back up to the previous high after a gap down, it, it'll bring in volume. It'll bring in people buying to the upside here. So that's kind of what my idea was. It needed to break the high, which was 283. And volume was coming in. I hit the buy button, 277. I go long, anticipating this move up. Uh, through here actually that's not it <clears throat> it broke it later and did what we were hoping but here it didn't so we had the pop which you know whatever pull back and then candle over candle in the one minute is what we we're playing for and this move right here pop pull back candle because it didn't make a new high so we call this a pullback candle and then candle over candle because it broke the high of the la of the uh, previous pullback candle so pop, pull back, candle over candle. One of my favorite plays, right? On the one minute, five minute daily chart, doesn't matter, love it. Anyway, uh, that should have set this thing off, but instead what happened is for some reason, there's a crap ton of sellers <laughs> still around on this stock. It only has 6 million shares outstanding, but the sellers were just there in force and when it only gave me a penny and now we're double topping here, that was my sign I needed to get out. So I bailed as we went candle under candle. Coming back down, I sell minus, basically minus eight hundred sixty dollar loss on this trade. Uh, it did finally get back up and you kind of see the volume that comes in. And this is the, this is 283 right here. Got that um, volume, it needed to break through it. And the high of day was, well this was 287. I think it went higher yeah, so not a lot of follow through, you know, it get, finally got over this hump and into this window. And, you know, when it happens, it 
there's no guarantee that it's going to go all the way back you know up to here to the to the next candle resistance level but what it does mean is you know a lot of times the natural resistances you know the whole and half dollar levels those are in play you know and those create pretty big windows you know you get your three dollar level you got your 350 you got your four dollar level 450 five dollar level 550 you know those are all very much in play you don't know where they're going to stop at but it's certainly a nice window to play uh, it just didn't work out here uh, didn't get the move i was hoping for instead i got a double top which is a very bearish sign this is a double top right here at this point and this point which led to the downfall and me losing uh 160 dollars Shares of the EWU taking a dip again on apparent information now of that this report. One has, uh, this window from 283 up to eight dollars, so it's a pretty big window. MSC Alpha Michael Sandy Charlie American Superconductor says court imposes sentence on Sinovel in connection with AMSC trade numbers. secrets. That's Alpha Michael Sandy Charlie. seller there so once that guy moves out of the way that's where I'll add two three stopped out 72 four hundred dollar loss So SECO, this one was just kind of a half dollar, 50 cent level break play. Uh, again, another reason why I subscribed to chat rooms. I wasn't even paying attention to the stock. Didn't, never heard of the ticker before. Uh, Ross and Warrior Trading, call it out. I take a look at it. Um, I know that as a lot of times the stocks approach you know, the half dollar level, it's People will buy and buy and buy going into that half dollar level thinking that, you know, shorts are going to stop out at that half dollar level and send the stock even higher as forced buying comes in. So you'll see that a lot of times at whole and half dollars, you know, uh, that's kind of what this play was. It's not one I typically will play, but I have in the past, especially in strong markets, but um, they went long and this is one, this is one that I actually followed in. I waited for them to buy and I actually followed them in it. It's a bigger float stock, so I, it was safe for me to do that. But uh, I knew if they were buying, then so was a lot of other people. So I went long at um, 9, basically 40. Pops over 9.50. I see that it's going to act, that 9.50 level is going to act as resistance rather than create a second leg up. And when I see that, I just hit the sell button and take my six cent win. Yo, is a possible red to green move. SECO has to be quick on though. I've got a starter on SECO, and I would add over the half dollar for a red to green move. SECO high is so this next trade is BNTC this is not a play I typically do but I do look for it um, so BNTC was a gap play or it gapped up this morning and when when the market opened up it's all all it did was really sell off just people cashing in they've been holding for a while maybe and they're just cashing and cashing and cashing in but it didn't you know this is hanging around 380 at this point it didn't really fall apart hard what it did is it broke that for that hold our level it kind of came down to 360 bounced back up and was kind of just hovering in this area here uh 
and I'm and I'm thinking to myself at some point, you know, this thing is going to take off. You know, shorts are going to get frustrated. Unfortunately, you can't hear my my narration during the trading hours. My mic didn't work, but you know what I'm was telling everybody is what what I was trying to tell everybody. Apparently, they didn't hear me because my mic sucked. But anyway, uh, a lot of times these stocks, if you know, people short people will short these stocks that got up in the morning because they're either you got two types of people selling. You got the short sellers selling, and you have people that have been holding the stock for a while that might have been trapped in it for a long time. I mean, who knows how many bag holders are in this thing? And they get this one day, one glorious day, this one opportunity, you know they're selling. So there's got two types of people pushing this thing down, and really only one type of person buying it, and that's the day traders. So anyway, shorts, they're selling it out of the open, uh, pushing it down, pushing it down. And a lot of times when a stock just kind of fluctuates in this area, in an area without making stair steps down, it'll frustrate shorts and they'll start to cover. And when they start to cover, it'll embolden longs and longs will start going. Well, what I, I and I was watching for that to happen because I was watching this stock. I'm like, it's really not falling apart. It's not, you know, giving me any kind of sign that it wants to go up or anything, but it's not really just tanking. You know, it broke this pre-market low here and only dropped, you know, 10 cents and then popped back up and broke, you know, five minute candle under candle and only got another 10 cents out of that. I mean, that's not the moves that these shorts were looking for, for sure. So I was looking for any opportunity to go long on this thing. And that came, and you can kind of see it, the volume's really light, really light. And all of a sudden we got uh, a pretty big spike here in volume. Um, I went long at 1020. This was a big spike in volume. And I'm like, okay, this is just pure volume play. I was playing volume. That's a pretty big spike. And this is a pretty big spike. I'm going to go long here. So I went long just off of volume. And um, we got somewhat of a pop here. This is a five minute chart. Somewhat of a pop. I was kind of hoping up to the view app at least four dollar break but uh got up this is a boring boring trade I, I was profitable on it i got a little greedy i was thinking four dollars was going to break on this first push and it did not uh it rejected the, the level pretty good that i was watching and it came back down and i was just going to stop out break even but i did end up winning about forty dollars on the trade still down 690 on the day but you know recovering Commissions amount to about almost five hundred dollars today. So I'd say at this point I don't want to go back down more than a thousand dollars. If I finish down six ninety, that right there is is a is a good recovery. MS Glenn, Michael Saniaski, November. Uh, press release new studies show superior healing outcomes associated with ultrasonic debridement. That's uh, Meisenich, My, uh, Michael Saniaski, November. All right, so I just had this play here on BNTC that got a high of almost $4 and came back down. And when it came back down, it actually went lower than, you know, the previous low that was going on before that, which was, you know, 370 level right in here. So when it came back down, it broke that 370 level. But it was just weird because it just didn't collapse. It kind of hung out there. So while it's hanging out here, I'm thinking to myself, well, it's not going to collapse. Maybe it's going to give us that next push and break this VWAP here. So I go long. Right 
here as I, I I'm watching the L2 and it looks like volume is coming in. So I go long at 379. Uh, it, the volume does not come in like I thought it was. And I end up selling. It did pop up to 396 again, but I don't think I was in it when it did that and come back down. Regardless, I only made another two cents on this, $40. Uh, just it's not a, a tr this is not a strong setup that I was playing, but um, I was taking pop shots and I was making forty dollars. So you know, in the span of five minutes, made eighty dollars. I'll do that all day long. But um, yeah, again, I, the pops did happen. You know, I was reading it right. I just didn't cash in on it fully. Commissions and a lot of traders make just because they're on cap. So BNTC, there's like a ton of sellers still for some reason, but. The support so, level back over the half dollar. is uh, watch, UK defense 270, 260, Wilson somewhere in there. Has committed an attack on British soil, which has led to the death of a British citizen. So, you know, just gonna... Referring to the watch it. Hopping back in, BNTC, 279. Thought volume was coming in, but kind of just stopped. So I might stop out of two or three seventy six breaks. Sorry. No doubt it's extended on the five and on the one. All right, I'm in at two fifty, and my target is two fifty five. Let's see if these sellers keep okay. showing up. So stop loss now will probably be break even on uh, BNTC at three eighty. All right, I'm out. 381. So uh, the last couple of trades on BNTC, I had missed the move I was looking for basically twice. It tapped four dollars twice, missed it both times. This time, uh, I th I was gonna <laughs> I was determined to get the right move. So we had the pop here, it went to 396. Kind of see that up here. This is the high when I hover over the candle. High is 396, another one minute candle, 396. The high here is 395, so that signals to me that this is a pullback candle. Did not make a new high, uh, or yeah, this is just a pullback candle, made a lower high. And then this is just the one minute candle over candle with volume. Uh, I went long at 396 as we're breaking this candle right here, 396. You see volume coming in when I went in. It gets to $4, it breaks $4, goes to 418. Um, I really should have sold there, but I'm, I was so I was so thinking to myself, this could be an all-day holder. You got it in a good time. It could just rip and rip and rip. Uh, VWAP is resistance. I should have sold here. Um, I didn't. When I had the chance, I thought I was going to break 420 and just get ripping. I just didn't do that. So um, as I was coming back down, I sold for 408. Nonetheless, it's a 12 cent win on 2,000 shares, $240. I'll take that all day long. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was, it was it was a good trade still, and I, I made good money on it. And that's how I finished the morning as well. Really taking off. You know, hitting the scanners. I'm long, 397, looking for four. Out 408. I'll wait for a one minute play on this guy now. And that's how I ended my morning in the first hour of trading up $1,489. If you're interested in my trading style or if you have any questions whatsoever, please come into the free Discord chat room that I run. Link is in the description down below. <laughs> Save yourself some growing pains as you learn day trading. That's what it's there for to help. Come get help. <laughs> I hate watching people lose money. That's why I, I created it. So please come on in. If you're interested in the chat rooms that I subscribe to, link for those are also in the description down below. All right, I'll see you in the next one.